And he said, I don't know why I did this. I had a great life. But once he started to see what was going on with these root canals and the massive infections yeah. that were going inside, he, he couldn't do anything else. If your continuing search for answers has led you nowhere, you will find the truth here on the Forbidden Doctor podcast. Seek the truth with your hosts, Dr. Jack and Mary Stockwell. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. Jack. And Mary. And this is podcast episode 107. Root canals, are they killing you? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to find out in this podcast why Wait. I sound like a 13-year-old with braces. <laughs> A 13-year-old with hormonal problems. Yeah, there's that. Braces, yes. Yeah, but the braces. Yeah, yeah you're going to, I've had some, I, I think I mentioned it in a previous podcast, I've had some things done in the way of root canal, toxic root canal removal, and so I have some spacers that I have to wear until my bones grow back into my jaw. <laughs> so anyway. You sound like kind of the godfather, you know, the kind of, you know, all important. And No, I take that back. Okay. You sound like a 13-year-old. Thank, thank you. Okay. All right. So, uh, root canals, killer. Um, we are the only mammals that mummify an organ and put it back in the body, are the words of uh, the dentist who has been taking care of me. We're going to tell you a little bit more about him. But essentially what happens, and what we're going to be talking about here, is where we, we, will, we, we kill the tooth by pulling out the root. And, of course, in the root, there, there we find the nerve and the blood supply. And then we stuff it with medicine to try to kill that bacteria with, with what seems to be a terribly inefficient amount that, to actually get the job done. Then we seal it over with a crown, preventing oxygen from getting in that allows a perfect low oxygen environment to grow dangerous anaerobic bacteria. Yeah, and with the that's nerve gone... Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, that's what happened with our son in whatever podcast that was we talked about, that oh, anaerobic yeah. bacteria. In the frontal sinus. Yeah, very scary stuff. And so when you get the anaerobic bacteria that is growing there, and, there's and, no when oxygen. The ner- and the nerve is gone, mm-hmm. you can't feel what is happening. And so, so you don't know. You don't, you know, the, the uh, analogy I was giving to some patients the other day is, uh, if you're going to rob a bank, what a bank robber would love to be able to do the night before the robbery is go in and put duct tape over all the lenses on the cameras and turn down the turn off the alarm system. Yeah, that's what this does. That's, that's what, what this does. Yeah. It turns off the alarm system inside of your tooth. And that begins, you, you know, the so osteomyelitis will begin because of the slow rot and the putrefaction that starts, osteonecrosis, and you get this, and we'll we'll explain what these things are, and you get this slow drip, drip, drip of this poisonous, toxic material into the bloodstream that leads to a whole panorama of symptoms and diseases that can lead to an early death. So this is going to be one of the most provocative and controversial podcasts we have ever done. Yeah, I hope your endodontists that are patients of yours are not listening. (laughs) Yeah, well, I I hope he isn't too. Yeah, or his wife. Anyway, if you've had a root canal, you might want to have a very serious discussion with your dentist, or if you don't have a a dentist, you go see a biological dentist in the very near future. So that's going to be our subject for this podcast. And because these podcasts are free, we have to generate some income. We work really hard on these. Um, especially me. I mean, Jack and I do a tremendous amount of research, but I put all the slides together. And you've heard about us talk about our products on the Doug Steffen National Radio Show and here on our international podcast. So we're 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 super excited um, because we're making a new size yes. for the Lee enzymes. And we talked about this a little bit last week, but we haven't sold out all of our very large bottles yet. So... We know they're expensive, so we decided to extend our sale one last one more week. Yeah, but to, that's it. To completely, yeah, that's, that's it. it. We want to completely clear them out. So I wanted to read this um, a, a amazing Amazon testimonial. We are still selling the Lee enzymes on Amazon, but um, this. Let me just read this real quick. 
It's from Amazon Verified Purchase. It just says purchase. Verified. We don't know who this is. I don't know who it is. Yeah. But if you, she, this, he or she says, if you want to help your body heal itself, take these enzymes. We've been taking them for at least six months, and our overall health is better. Digestive problems have been eliminated. Whoa, that's good. Heartburn is no longer an issue, and we both have an increase in energy. With this whole food supplement, we know our whole body is being rejuvenated from the inside out. I had recently lost a friend to pancreatic cancer, and one always wonders what else could they have done to prevent it. When I heard about the Stockwell's podcast on these enzymes, they sounded just like what I've been looking for. Listen to their podcast. Great product, great customer support. And we just have to say we have, have all five all stars. All five star ratings so On far. Amazon. I mean, that's, that's not a whole lot. What, it's 12, it's, 13? It, I think Cause, so. Yeah, because it's this is a relatively new product on Amazon. Yeah, and so we've we've got a, a well. Mess it's been of, in our office for two years. Yes. So, but only recently on Amazon. On Amazon, but it's all five yeah. stars. And and the cool thing about it is that uh, several of the people who've given us five star ratings, we don't know who they are. I know. I don't know who this yeah. is. They should but tell we, us. But we know they're buying all around the country because when we go to Amazon Seller Central to monitor our inventory. We can see sales from around the country. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah. But to use our coupon, you have to go to our website. You can't use coupons at Amazon. No. uh -uh. So on our website, you go to... ForbiddenDoctor.com. ForbiddenDoctor.com. When you check out, just use Lee Sell, and you will get an amazing price. And the retail price is $210. It's a three-month supply. But we've dropped it to 125 for one more week because we want to get rid of every single bottle. And the reason we want to is because we thought when we created this that it would take probably three months of using this product for people to get results. Yeah. And what we have found out, people are getting results within a week to 10 days. Yeah, they are. And so we want to package them in a one-month supply, not three-month supply. Right. But in order to be able to pay for that, yeah, we, we have it. to clear out the large inventory well, first. Well, and... and <laughs> We we originally made this for people to have serious pancreatic problems like you had. Oh yeah. So you know we which thought, I don't have. No, you had that Not test no done. Yeah. So we we thought that they would need a big three month supply, but we're finding maybe they don't, and they're expensive. So. We're excited to do this. But just use That's l- just about our cost. But you too, have to so. do it at our website, not Amazon. Yeah. And here's doctor. one more com. thing I'm doing for you. You can use this coupon over and over until March second. Oh, I thought it was just one time. Yeah, it was last week. It was one time. Uh. So now I've decided to open up. You can tell your friends, tell your families, and let's get let's heal the world with this. It's very, very foundational. Oh, okay. Not one time only. Yeah. Because we have to clear out that stock. Yeah. And the, the, they were we we just had delivery like three months ago. These things have a two year two year shelf life, so they're perfectly fresh. They're very good. Yeah. We just need to be able to get smaller bottles. Okay, catch this, because we rarely have coupons. I think this is the second time we've ever had a coupon on our podcast, podcast, and we've done 107 podcasts. So this is pretty rare, so grab it while you can. We also wanted to tell you about our personalized supplement protocol. This is really cool. You go to our website, ForbiddenDoctor.com, fill out the short survey, and you will receive back a personalized Supplement protocol just for you. Yeah. And also a free 30-minute um, talk with our Yeah, and should you want to go further when you submit your supplement protocol. And we've only been doing this for a couple of months now. Yeah, and there's no obligation. But, we, yeah, a free 30-minute uh, review of the results of your survey. Right. And there's no obligation. It doesn't cost you anything. If you don't want to go any further, fine. If you mm-hmm. want to follow the protocol, then, of course, there's more... Uh, time and effort involved at that this point. This is really fantastic. I hope yeah. we can offer it forever and ever. Okay. want you all to remember to listen to Dr. Jack live on the national radio every Tuesday at 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. If you go to RadioAmerica.com, you can hear him live. That's Mountain Standard Time, yeah. 7 to 8. Right. That's our time in Utah. Yes. So figure it out. But <laughs> Well, 9, 9 <laughs> a.m. East Coast. Okay, 9 a.m. East Coast. And 6.35 in Baltimore. <laughs> no, just, just kidding. <laughs> and for those of you in Utah, he is also, well, actually everywhere. It's repeated every Saturday. But in Utah, it's on at 6 a.m. on K-Talk. So that's kind of nice. You've got a lot of fans from K-Talk. You were on that, you had a morning talk show host, a talk show for 20 years. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> 
All right. And we want to remind you to join our texting blast. Just text the word HEALTHY to 41411, where every week we give incredible coupons. Okay, this is our weekly feature, Forbidden Secrets They Don't Want You to Know. These are the secret things they keep from you, the dumb things they tell you, and the really important things they know nothing about. We have a podcast on this very subject. Oh, yes, fecal transplants. Number 75. Yes, that was a really gross, wonderfully helpful <laughs> podcast. And we had patients that tried this. This, this is article is entitled, You'll Never Believe What Doctors Are Using to Fight Gut Infections. It's in Fe- the Washington Post. And fecal there's the link. transplants. Yep. And um, some of the, we pulled out a couple things out of the article. And it says, Despite these and other promising results, fecal fecal microbial transplants, that's FMT, is still not accepted by many physicians who see it as is too much off the conventional path of practicing. Yeah, they, they they will prescribe various drugs that are definitely off label into areas of human physiology not approved for use by the FDA. But when it comes to something like this that gets rid of C. diff, yeah. No. no, 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 no. No, it's too much off the conventional path of practicing. Um, also, another quote in here is, the current standard treatment, ironically, is yet another antibiotic. But that can trigger a never-ending cycle. Mm. So the article talks about how the, the doctors will use antibiotic after antibiotic after antibiotic, yes. and it just never ends. And this little girl in this picture was almost dead, and her life was saved because she had C. diff. Another one is currently, for any indications other than C. diff infection, doctors who want to perform the procedure need to apply for an investigational new drug research permit. The poop is a drug? Yes. To take that. Well, you can only use it for C. diff. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You can't use it for IBS or diverticulitis Ulcerative. or any other digestive problem. You, re- you, you know that... A fecal transplant saved my father's life. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Saved his life. He didn't even, they were saying he's a, he's um, on his last little bit. They didn't know how long. They gave him a fecal transplant and it turned him around in a couple hours. So that's really, really, because he had had so many antibiotics. He th- That's when C. diff just flourishes. Yes. So Okay, so let's jump right into the disclaimer. Um, do you want to read it? <clears throat> We are so sick of reading these. It's your turn. <laughs> why don't we? Why don't we just do our dental disclaimer? People can read that disclaimer if they want to. Okay, read it. I get that tired. sounds good. Yeah. Now we're going to be talking about dentistry, an area of dentistry, and believe it or not, <laughs> neither Mary nor myself are dentists. Although my dad's a dentist, my brother's a dentist. Yeah, yeah. I've been well, around dentists. Well, my brother in law is an orthodontist. You have some dentistry in you because yes. he was practicing dentistry and I was when a, you were conceived. I, yes, he was. And so, I was dentist. a dental assistant, too. I remember my first immediate denture. I was 12 years old. You know, dad didn't care about child labor laws. No. <laughs> he just pulled us in and I, this lady had all her teeth pulled out and blood everywhere and he threw dentures in and I almost passed out. Oh my goodness. It was terrible. But then after that, nothing bothered me. Well, my experience with dentistry was a two hour lecture back in human development when I was in college on the fetal and prenatal development of the teeth. Two hours. Two That's full it. hours. Two full hours. Well, I beat you then. This is where teeth come from. This is how they <laughs> migrate. This is how they form. And then, you know, around five or six months, they begin to emerge. But even still, we are not experts. Okay? But everything I have learned about dentistry and what we're going to talk about in this podcast, um, since graduation, where my specialty, of course, was the nervous system and the spine, not the teeth, right. is coming from published research articles. Okay. Here I am <laughs> before my teeth reconstruction was we done. We are not allowed to take any pictures of Jack right now. There's no pictures anywhere on any internet, any phone. This is crazy. So we got one of my, I think this <laughs> Look is... Look at that tongue. That's a massive B vitamin deficiency. Boy, sure is that the huge ridge there. <laughs> That's, I, think this is, I think this is my high school graduation picture, <laughs> if I remember right. Anyway... Yeah. So we're going to be talking about forbidden information concerning root canals. Yes. And this is going to just blow you away. Now, the overwhelming scientific evidence shows that virtually all root canal-treated teeth are infected and slowly and continually leak 
disease-causing pathogens and toxins into the rest of the body as long as they remain in the mouth. This is from The Toxic Tooth. Uh, the book, The Toxic Tooth, we're going to get to that here shortly. Explain a little bit more about it. Well, this tooth looks nothing like The Toxic Teeth. Oh, we get are a good to... look at how white this... This is a photograph. Yeah. Get a, this... And there's the three roots, so you know this is a molar. Yeah, this this was stock photography, but this is nothing like... We're going to gross you out. Get, yes. Get your dra Dramamine. You might want to take it before you yes. finish. And, and, and if you have <laughs> recently eaten anything, put this on pause for two or three hours <laughs> yeah. so your stomach clears before you see some of the so videos you just, you just we're going to show you. <laughs> <laughs> Just dry heave. This is terrible. So hold on. Hold your nose and get ready. Get a throw-up bag bag yes. ready and handy. Okay. So removing the pain-sensing nerves from a tooth and blocking all access to the infection-fighting immune system does not cure the tooth. That's from the book as well. This is my uh, uh, doctor. Your doctor, biological dentist. My biological dentist, Dr. Judson Wall, who did the work on me. And you're going to be seeing a lot of it here in this in this podcast. Is the one who said we are the only mammals that mummify an organ and then put it back in the body. And here you see the just a, gen, a general description how a root canal happens. In the far left tooth of the five that are there, you see the cavity beginning there in the middle of the crown of the tooth. And then you see the light gray up there where the black is, or the gray. And then there's a light gray layer underneath it. That's the dentin. Uh, the outside is the enamel, and eventually the cavity works its way through the enamel. It gets into the dentin. And then you see in the second picture, it hollows out. The third picture is getting worse. Then in the fourth picture is where they drill the tooth out. They drill out the root, and this, this uh, tooth is, happens to have two roots. And so you see the red going on down there. That's the medicine that they put in to kill the bacteria that forms at the bottom of the tooth. And then in the last picture, they have the reconstruction, the crown that's placed on it. So that's the finished root canal there at that last picture. Yeah. I remember Dad doing this with his great big hands, cleaning out those roots. He, he wouldn't do the four roots. He sent them off to endodontists, but the two he would do. So... So is, here's the is, book. Is your smile worth your life? Yeah, what you need to know before undergoing a root canal, and this is from Dr. Robert Kulak and Thomas E. Levy. Undergoing a root canal procedure isn't anyone's idea of a good time. But if one is necessary, we don't even question its safety. Now, I've had but we should. six root canals. I almost had a seventh one two weeks ago. Yeah. And I never questioned its safety. It never occurred to me. I had pain. They took a picture. They said that, you know, the root is dying. The pulp is wasting away. You need a root canal. Well, who questions that? Nobody. And I, my family always said it's always better to have your original tooth and in to there. And to pull it out and put in a yeah, implant. Yeah, nobody talked about it being mummified <clears throat> and sealing in bacteria. Nope. And getting a necrotic, you know, bone. And well, this is a book that needs to be in every family library. Yeah. Robert Kulak and Thomas Levy, MD, and, uh, and a, uh, an attorney as well. Yeah, they both wrote this together, but most of the book is about the top doctor, Dr. Dr. Kulak. Yeah, he had done one root canal years before he started getting these severe headaches and a very... Uh, Dr. Levy down here on the bottom. And... When he started getting the headaches, he also started getting some very high blood pressure. Yes, severe headaches and very high blood pressure. He goes into it, uh, you know, really in depth. So he consults his dentist, uh, Dr. Huggins, and was asked if he had any root canals. And he answered, well, I've got one. Why? Dr. Huggins said, well, you're not going to get rid of the high blood pressure. And remember that one. Yeah. Underline that because we're going to talk about that. Until you get rid of the root canal. And he was stunned and he said... Well, the tooth feels fine. You mean I have to get the tooth taken out? Dr. Huggins didn't miss a beat. Only if you want to get well. <laughs> so he had his one root canal taken out, his blood pressure normalized, his headaches completely disappeared, and he went on to write this book. No, un, no this is another book. Another book, Uninformed Consent, The Hidden Dangers in Dental Care. But he also co-wrote with Dr. Kulak here, The Toxic Tooth. Now, I wanted to mention this doctor <clears> on the <throat> bottom, Dr. Levy... He's an MD. Yeah. He's a cardiologist, a board yes. certified cardiologist, and a bar certified attorney. Yeah. So these are no little, you know, oh, let's write a book on a toxic tooth. 
Yeah, just listening to some talk radio show. Oh, let's write a book on it. <laughs> so, but the up the the upper doctor, Doctor Kulak, I think that's how you say his name. Um, his story is is so sad. What it cost him. What it cost him. Yes, he says my journey began when a patient told me that his doctor had warned him against root canal therapy, and he he did root canals. Yeah, and so he has this patient who he's telling, you need a root canal. And the patient says, well, my doctor told me not to get one. Yeah, and, and you know, he said in the book, I'll just real quickly, he, he had a wonderful life. He, he said, I only had to work about two, three days a week. I, I owned an airplane. I had beautiful cars. I was, I was feeling wonderful, and I was just enjoying life, everything. And then this patient came into him and said, my doctor warned me about a root canal, and so he started to look into this. And he said, I don't know why I did this. I had a great life. But once he started to see what was going on with these root canals and the massive infections yeah. that were going inside, he, he couldn't do anything else. Now, you see a picture there <clears throat> of an x-ray of teeth, and there's two teeth there with root canals. The middle one has one root. The one next to it, probably a premolar, has two roots. Mm-hmm. And the, the root on the right, now just follow me on this. We're talking about the, the tooth that's on the right that has two uh, root canals. The root canal that's on the right, follow that little tiny point going all the way down, and you see a little tiny black spot mm -hmm. at the bottom of that root. Scary. Bingo. I have learned from several dentists that is a bingo. That's problematic. Big. That's some necrosis that's taking place in the bottom of that tooth. And then also look at the middle root, the, the one single one, and then the one next to it, to the right, mm -hmm. how the root canal goes right down through the center of the tooth. Look at the far right one and how it drifts way off to the side and actually misses the spot at the bottom of the tooth where the necrosis is. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. We're going to get to that. That's critical. That's important. Okay. Well, this poor dentist. Notice he's not in a you know dental lab, and a you know stethoscope hanging over his neck, because they crucified him. Oh, this man him. lost everything. He it, now it, this is from the toxic tooth here. Yeah, I just pulled out some some quotes in here. Um, well, no, this the first one. Many of my patients noticed great improvement in medical conditions that had been plaguing them for years. Here's a few of those conditions. Bam. These through research, these <laughs> conditions have been related to the toxicity coming from a toxic root canal. So he started, you know, noticing this and he s saw these teeth like we saw in the last slide looked like they had infections at the root of the teeth. And yeah. so he started pulling a few of them, and boy, did he get in trouble. He lost his light. Well, we'll get into we'll that. We'll get into this. But first thing, he said, forget about justice. This has nothing to do with justice. They have an agenda. The, the people who, the, the New York Board of Dentistry came after him. As, yep. With, as, at gangbusters. Yeah, it was really, really scary. Because endodontic dentistry hundreds of millions of dollars a year in this country. Oh, yeah. They could it's not have him saying... It's one of the most expensive saying, areas of dentistry. Yes. What does it cost, per well, it costs over 1000 bucks. Yeah, you've had... Just to get the root canal, uh -huh. another 1000 bucks for the crown. Yeah. Oh, it's so scary. So he started taking out some of these, and the patients got so much better. He said, I, I was at a quandary. They had sued him and sued him and sued him, and he said, I could not afford to go back into practice, and I could not afford to pursue my legal rights. So he was completely stuck. He lost his, his um, license. And the board went after one of his patients this and just grilled them. him for a while. Mm -hmm. And this is what he says here. I called the patient to ask if he knew anything about this, the conspiracy against him. And he told me that two investigators from the New Jersey Attorney General's office had come to see him at work and ask a lot of questions about the treatment that I had performed. After a lengthy discussion with the investigators, my former patient told them, look, you're, you're going after the wrong guy. I feel 100% better than I did before, and all my blood work is much better. Why are you going after him? Well, like it says at the top, forget about justice. This isn't about justice. This is about preserving a $100 million business. Yeah. And uh, I love the last one there at the bottom. There could be class action lawsuits akin to those that were launched against the tobacco industry. If this gets any more momentum on the ground, 
and people find out what's really behind this in many cases. Yeah. We have to be careful. This is scary being the forbidden doctor. Okay. Um, Now, what you're looking here, this is a high-powered microscopic picture of the little tiny microchannels, uh, microtubules that exist in the root of the tooth. Okay. The reason we're showing you this is on the third line there in the copy underneath photograph of dentinal tubules, you see that little tiny red square right there. Well, just read the text above it. If the tubules tubules from a single tooth were placed end to end, it would extend up to three miles. There are from 55,000 to 90,000 tubules per square millimeter, about the size of this little square. You see that little teeny yeah. red square there? Not, there could be, depends on wh- which tooth in the mouth it is. Mm-hmm. There could be up to 90,000 tubules in that little tiny square. To get infected. That's how small they are. <laughs> So the, the the point is, it says here, the section tubules in the front of this photograph show how easily bacteria could hide in them, safe from mechanical, laser, even chemical eradication. Okay. And again, that's from the toxic tooth. Dr. Boyd Haley has talked about a lot in the book also, and he's a world-class biochemist. He developed a test to determine the toxicity of root canal-treated teeth. He proved that root canal-treated teeth are not healthy, they can release extremely potent exotoxins produced by the bacteria that remains inside the tooth. These toxins can disseminate throughout the body, do not stay confined inside the tooth, as the American Academy of Endodontists claims, are deleterious to normal cellular function and can cause or worsen systemic disease. Yes, we're going to get to that. Very interesting stuff. Dr. Haley's experimental procedure involved the following. Yes, and what he did this was just he tested what he did. up to 5,000 teeth. Wow. And this is a very interesting test. It says the root portion of an extracted root canal treated tooth was placed in one millimeter of sterile water and shaken for an hour. I mean, it's not just... <laughs> it's in a shaking machine that just... That's Shakes brushing like, your teeth for sure. Boy, for an hour. <laughs> then a tooth was remo- removed, placed in another milliliter of sterile water and shaken for an hour. Then these two washings would remove anything that was on the exterior of the root surface. Then it was placed in a third milliliter, one milliliter of sterile water shaken for an hour. And that third wash then was used to test for enzyme inhibition. And I'll explain that here in a moment. Since any toxins that would have been present in that third wash would had to have come from inside the tooth because the two previous washes had removed all the external contaminants. Okay. So um, using this, the the process is called nucleotide photo affinity labeling. And what they did is they took this third extract and and it was mixed up with five enzymes to find out if those enzymes in the solution would be inhibited by something. Now, if the water was clean, the enzymes would be full strength. Then he found that after 5,000 consecutive extracted root canal treated teeth, one quarter of them, about 1,250, showed minimal toxicity, which means less than 5% enzyme inhibition. Now, I'm going to explain that in just a moment. While others, the, the remaining 75%, showed profound toxicity. And the primary point to be concluded is that even with the two very prolonged washings before the third washing, measurable toxicity was detected in 100% of this series of teeth. Coming from inside the teeth. Coming from inside the root. Wow. Now, the, the basic body of this test is just to take a tooth through these three washings to remove the toxins from the exterior surface, and then the tooth is placed in this water to allow the toxins inside the tooth to be extracted. Now, these toxins, these proteins, are placed in this centrifuge, and it's filtered, and then that filtrate is mixed with five known enzymes to see if the enzymes would be inhibited or delayed in their reaction or stunted to some degree in their ability to do what they do in the presence of a protein. What happened is that um, after 5,000 teeth were tested, every tooth demonstrated toxic material in the interior of the tooth. The bottom line, these five enzymes 
And I'm not going to mention what they are and how they work, except all five of these enzymes that are a part of this well-known toxicity test are involved with the production of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Ooh, which that's is, energy. That's the gasoline of the body's energy system. Ooh. And I'm wondering if this is why my energy returned so quickly in less than 24 hours after I went through this procedure. Wow. Because in this test, it varies, you know, you take the thing you want to be tested, you're testing, you mix it in this solution, it goes through these sterile washes to make sure you've got the few contaminants as possible, you mix it with these enzymes, and then you test the enzymes for their strength. And if they're inhibited, you know there was a toxin in the solution that slowed down that enzyme from doing its job. And it had to be in the tooth because... This the last bullet was washed. This last bullet we didn't read. Toxins in the tooth do not naturally occur. Yes. So this wasn't coming from the teeth. This was coming from inside. Well, there's some more tests. We're going to get into that here in a second. There's some more tests that next, we're done Next here. slide. Yeah. Let's get into that. Um, oh, one more. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, bunny. Yeah. Goodbye, bunny. Yes. Are those the cutest little bunnies in yeah. the whole Who world? Who would harm a bunny? You know, evil, evil. But they're, they're used in tests. I remember in... Well, this uh, was a long time ago. I don't think they let you do it anymore. Well, they, PETA wouldn't let them They're do so it. cute. Well, I'll tell you, there's labs with monkeys, and there's labs with cats, and there's labs with mice and rodents, and there's labs with bunnies. Do they, because yeah. different species of mammals... Um, Depending on what you're trying to test, different mammals react differently. For instance, cats. Um, is our cat around? <laughs> yeah, little Lucy. To, I, I don't want her to hear this. Yeah. But I learned this in neuroanatomy in school where we were studying the spinal cord and the brain. Most neurological studies are done on a cat because a cat's neurological processes are very close to a human. No, it's because cats are mean, man. <laughs> They kill without, you know. She's asleep over there. You know, our son said last night, he said, you know, if I died and was laying here, I wonder which part of my body the cat would eat first. <laughs> she just kills and kills and kills. Well, we're talking about furry little bunnies. So if the rabbits, they, oh, if the rabbits did not quickly die from implanted root canal treated teeth, they typically develop the same diseases that plague the humans from wh whom the teeth had been extracted. Now, let me, now, we got to repeat that. Well, we're going to right We've here. We've got several controversial go. statements. That is one of the most important ones. We've talked about Weston Price many times. Many of you listening are familiar with Weston Price, his book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, mm -hmm. uh, that came out a little less than 100 years ago. But there's the Weston A. Price Foundation. There's the Price Pottinger Foundation. Sally Fallon, Sally Thomas Fallon, Cowan. And all a part of the Weston A. Price Foundation. Yep. Well, Weston Price was a dentist who performed many experiments that very, very clearly demonstrated that both bacteria and their associated toxins readily escape from a root canal-treated tooth. And in several of his experiments, he surgically implanted the extracted root canal-treated tooth under the skin of the rabbit. These teeth were highly toxic, and he found out that the rabbits did not quickly die. From the overwhelming toxicity of the implanted teeth, they typically develop the same diseases that plague the human from whom the teeth were extracted. So that toxic tooth was inside of a human's jaw. Came out. Came out. Went under the skin of a, you know, I'm sure cute, they volunteered. Cute little under bunny. Under the skin of a little bunny. He did this 33 rabbits in a row. It killed all 33 of them until they started to get more rabbits involved. Within four days, if those it, 33 rabbits were dead. This wow. is all in the book, The Toxic Tooth. But if the rabbit survived it, okay. it developed the disease that the human was suffering from that the root canal-treated tooth was removed. Wow. From. Now, this is, this is stunning. Yeah. This is absolutely stunning, and I can understand why the New York Board of Dentistry had to get rid of this man. Yeah. If this were, if this gets out. And they did. They got rid of him. He repeated these experiments over and over and continued to obtain the same results. Price would repeatedly verify not only the enormous toxicity of these extracted root canal treated teeth, he also demonstrated that there existed an uncanny spe specificity of these teeth to reproduce the different diseases of their human donors 
in their rabbit recipients. For example, if a patient presented with a kidney infection that resolved after extraction of a root canal treated tooth, and this tooth was implanted under the skin of a rabbit, the rabbit would develop the same kidney infection. Unbelievable. Dr. Price found that various bacteria had an affinity for specific body tissues and would tend to migrate there. This is the phenomenon called elective localization, a term coined by its discoverer, Dr. Edward Rosenow. So this, this idea okay. is that you've got a situation where certain bacteria, when the popul- it's not just in the gut. Right. Bacteria can get into the bloodstream. If it's overpowering, it's called sepsis, and that can kill you mm-hmm. in a matter of minutes to hours. Mm-hmm. But if it's a low degree leak from a toxic tooth you just feel awful that is low slowly drip 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 into the bloodstream your immune system is constantly going wild over this stuff energy is being depleted for the immune system to fight this stuff but those things have a tendency to agglomerate collect concentrate whatever else in certain parts of the body in joints yeah uh, and we're going to get to that here in a few minutes. Uh, the liver, the kidney, the heart. Mm-hmm. How many times has somebody been to a dentist and the dentist warned the patient about to get a root canal? There's a serious chance that the toxins that are in this tooth right now can migrate to the heart. Yeah, Rheumatic I fever. Heard that a lot. And you heard that a lot, and that's a general warning Especially in, in general family. dentistry today. Mm-hmm. So we've got to do a root canal to clean that stuff out, put in the medicine, seal it up. Give you antibiotics. What we're trying to say is that may not get all the poison out of there. Besides the fact that it destroys your gut. So as further proof that it was the infection in the the extracted tooth, extracted root canal treated teeth that was responsible for the development of systemic disease, he also implanted uninfected extracted teeth under the skin or muscle of a rabbit. He also implanted sterilized objects, such as coins, to see if just the presence of a foreign body might cause disease. In all such implants, nothing of consequence happened to these laboratory animals. The implanted objects, either uninfected teeth or other foreign bodies, eventually became encapsulated in a cyst-like sac and remained sterile. All of the rabbits remained healthy. Wow. Now, is this saying that... Regardless of your disease, if you have the root canal removed, it'll take care of the disease. No, 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 no. A lot of his detractors did their research, Mm -hmm. and it's published here in the Toxic Tooth book. And it says here, and this is where they were looking at people with rheumatoid arthritis who had root canals. Okay. Researchers came to the conclusion that no benefit accrued to 47 out of 52 patients with rheumatoid arthritis after the infected teeth were removed. This study is cited to disprove the link between root canal treated teeth and systemic disease. In other words, here is a big study that was done to prove that what we've just gotten through saying is wrong. Well, there's a problem with the study. There is a difference between cause and causation. For example, having a 30 year smoker with lung cancer who stops smoking isn't gonna stop or reverse the lung cancer. If he, he's coughing up blood, he's like, oh, I'll stop smoking. He's probably going to die of lung cancer even if he stops smoking. Well, here's, and what we're saying, we're not saying if you have cancer, getting your root canals out will cure it. Yeah, that's important. I'm going to say that twice. We are not, we are not saying if you have cancer, getting your root canal is going to cure it. Although there is good evidence to indicate toxicity of the root canal may be a contributing cause to the cancer, and there's studies about that. But what's, imp- what's really important, the thing that I want to get to here is this idea of the secondary infection concept involved in the rheumatoid arthritis that had already been seated and established at the time of the tooth extraction. In other words, you, already had you, can, get, you can get an infection, some kind of a problem that gets long enough, strong enough that inflammatory processes begin as a result of that infection. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, the ongoing, as he says, there's antigen antibody. In other words, the antigen is the poison that came from the tooth. The body builds these antibodies to take care of the antigen. And we've got plenty of podcasts on this, Mary, as you well know. Mm-hmm. 
that creates the inflammatory reaction. And with that, along with the chronic physical change of the disease, it will continue to feed the inflammatory response even after the initiating infection is resolved. We're quoting from the book. Now, what does this mean? It simply means this, that the original cause of a disease can be followed up by a secondary cause that creates an even larger presence of the symptoms. In other words, makes the symptom even worse even after the original cause may have subsided a little bit. So it's like a runaway train. Right. The infection may be gone, but an autoantibody sets in, an autoimmune problem, which is what rheumatoid arthritis is. The body is attacking the joint. What caused it to do that in the first place? What they're suggesting in this book, it may have been toxins from a toxic root canal that was leaking these poisons, got into the joints, concentrated there, caused the infection, caused the inflammation, but eventually the infection was subsided, but the inflammation continued because an autoimmune response started taking place. In other words, whatever disease the doctor's treating may not be the actual cause of the symptoms, or at least not the original cause. It may be long over with. So when they pulled out all these teeth from people who had been suffering from rheumatoid arthritis for a long time, and they still had rheumatoid, ah, ha, ha. It didn't work. You know, your idea's wrong. But it was the secondary problem, not caused, not caused by the root canal, caused by the body's immune response to the poisons of the root canal. So it it was a bad study. It was a poor study. And I just want to mention that there was another side to this. Now... Another uh, critique, another critique of his studies is that he didn't conduct his studies like we conduct them today. You know, a randomized, double-blind study. You mean he didn't have millions of dollars to do that? (laughs) Yeah. He didn't get what Jerry's kids get on uh, Labor Day weekend. Um, Well, in all honesty, the randomized, double-blind, which is the Bible approach to study today, was intended for plants, for agronomy. Yeah. For, for determining genetic determination in, in cross-hybridization of plants. Which you can control. Not human beings. You can control the human being and no, the complexity so, of the body. Exactly. There's, there's exactly way too right. much going there's on. So, there's way too much going on. Yeah. So, so we just want to mention here, here again that the goal of our podcast is the same as the goal of this book. It's not to eliminate the root canal procedure per, per se. The goal is to state scientific research, to interpret it logically, to stimulate further objective and unbiased research, which is hard to do anymore, into the safety of root canal treated teeth and to allow dental patients to make their own best treatment decisions. Yes, yeah, so we're going to give you the forbidden information that yes. you're not going to get anywhere else. So what, do you, what are, what's the healthy alternative? Well, what are the healthy options to this? Yeah, if you've got an infected tooth, yes. there's... Different options to um, well, you can have the root. You can have the tooth pulled and just leave the space empty. Yeah, that's a problem. As my middle grade, my middle year picture there of me with the apple earlier in the podcast (laughs) with the one tooth. The one tooth. Yes, but the the problem with this, but the problem with pulling a tooth and leaving it empty is the tooth above it will fall down. Because there's it nothing, can. it can, it usually does. The teeth on either side of the hole will start to collapse. Yes. So it is a problem. So that's why these other suggestions are here. Yeah. Restore you, the missing tooth or empty spaces with a removable partial denture. Right. That's, which is what I have. Which is what you have until as well. the bone grows in and they can give me implants. Yes. Or restore the empty space or spaces with a permanently cemented fixed bridge. That can be expensive, and it can also cause problem. I mean, you have to drill down the t- two teeth on either side. Right, right. So that's, in my opinion, a very, um, I don't know about that choice. Or we store the space with dental implants. Yeah, and dental implants have really soared. Our dentist told us that in the last 10 years, oh, yeah. they, have just, they have just soared. They, ha- they now have ceramic zirconium. Yeah, the, Dental, the posts are made out posts. of a ceramic diamond zirconium dust is the is the post. And then the reconstruction on top is zirconia. Yeah. Okay, now my favorite part of the podcast. <laughs> well, first, we're going to talk just a spec about this Dr. Judson well, Wall. Well, we're going to tell you my story, and there's, here's, hey, here's how it starts. Yeah. Look I, had, I got permission. I said, hey, can we mention you in the podcast he didn't say how much. He didn't say how far. He said, oh, yeah, that would be all right. Just, you know, you can mention me. Well, look at all those letters after his name. 
this guy has studied and studied and studied, and he used to do root canals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, he, just like Dr. Uh, Kulaks, he did these himself until he began to notice something. Yeah, and his um, employees say that he just studies all the time. So I'm really impressed with him. His his um, It's in Bountiful, Utah, for those of you that are not in Utah, I'm sorry, but you can always find a biological dentist who treats the whole body, not just the teeth. Right. So that's what a biological dentist does, and they don't use things like fluoride and... And you they know, don't toxic use amalgams. amalgams. Yeah, mercury, or they try to stay away from antibiotics, as Dr. Wall does. We've got an incredible story to tell you about that. They also get a complimentary fruit and vegetable smoothie. Oh, that, that sold me. That's, that's the part <laughs> we that sold me. We took the smoothie they gave you and brought it home and put two raw eggs in it. Yes. And mix it back up. Yeah, made it, made it healthy. Yeah, mm-hmm. we told them they should put raw eggs in their smoothie. So anyway, he is located at tmjdental.com. Yeah, or you can just search Dental Solutions also. So. Yeah, Dental Solutions. Utah's Dental Solutions, something like yeah. that. But tmjdental.com. And he, um, we wanted to show you this slide. It's from his website, but it's interactive. Like you can click on a tooth. And just to show you how he treats the whole body here with being a biological dentist. Yes. To where if you have a problem like in tooth number three, that is on the same meridian as your liver, your kidneys, your pancreas, your stomach, your breasts. And we've been doing biomeridian work for over a decade in the clinic, Mm -hmm. reading the meridians of the body with an FDA-approved device to do so. Class 2 medical device. Class 2 medical Mm -hmm. device to find the energy, the weaknesses, the stresses that exist inside the body. Well, interestingly enough, those meridian lines run through each of the teeth. So if you've got kidney disease and problems and all kinds of different things, you might want to look at the tooth teeth. Tooth number three. Tooth number three and other teeth that correspond with those meridians because that could be the final. Now, I got to say this. It's not in the program, but it just came to me. Uh, a lot of people know the name Ignaz Semmelweis and from Eastern Europe. I don't. We've talked about him. <laughs> you know, Iggy. We've talked about him. Sure. Iggy. Uh, 200 years ago, no, it was maybe 150 years ago, there was a real, real problem going on in the birthing clinics, and I think it was where Serbo Korea, where the, the... Oh, this is in the book, isn't it? Oh, I don't know if it's in the book or not. I thought it was. It might be, but there's a, a light in the darkness or something like that was the name of the book. This is when I wanted to be a doctor. I was about oh, 11, 12, or 13 maybe. years old, yeah. and I saw this book in my aunt's house, and I started to read it, and I couldn't put it down. And he noticed that, um, well, everybody noticed that there was a 25 to 30 percent fatality rate for women after childbirth. It, it was Austria or Serbo Croatia or somewhere around there. The, what, I know, I know, it how, doesn't I know how I do that. Somewhere in Eastern yeah. Europe. Was it 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock? And, yeah, it was on a Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> yeah. actually. Come on, and, tell and the story. And he noticed that if he would scrub his hands between births, women survived. Okay. But, but a lot of these people that were delivering babies in the afternoons were doing post-mortem autopsies on dead bodies in the morning. And they didn't wash their hands. Mm-hmm. They would just go deliver baby, deli- and the woman, w- w- they'd get purple fever and die. Mm-hmm. So he came in and said, holy smoke, there's something here we can't see. Now, Lewenhoek had already developed the microscope, and they were beginning to see the little, what he called, animacules, the bacteria, but they called mm-hmm. them animacules They look like little animals, yeah. And when he suggested to these learned men and women of medicine that they needed to wash their hands to stop this massive death of delivering mothers. He was crucified. He was totally destroyed, went nuts. So, and that's kind of what happened with this that's guy. He, happened, did, he didn't go nuts. He didn't go nuts, but Semmelweis, I he mean, lost he just went profession. downhill fast and just was destroyed by the medical profession of the day saying, it's, oh, that's ridiculous. Okay. So I wanted to mention that okay. in conjunction with, with the idea that there are meridian lines running through teeth, even though you can't see them, they are there and measurable. Yeah. Well, we measure them in the <clears throat> clinic all the time. We measure them in the clinic, and they measured mine, and they measured yours the other day in an exam mm-hmm. where they did an electrical reading of the teeth to see if they were conductive. <laughs> I wouldn't let them do it <clears throat> to me. 
Why no? Because you're such a pansy. You don't, <laughs> I you threw don't, a fit. No fit. No pain. No pain, Mary. No, no, no. It wasn't pain. I was scared of them putting that cold thing on each one of my teeth. Oh yeah, they do a cold test. Yeah. Well, I, well, dentists will do that anyway. I know, but I wouldn't let them do it because I don't like tests. First of all, but secondly, you know, my dad always says that's what creates microscopic cracks in oh, your yeah. teeth. Yeah. That massive cold when you chew ice. We were never allowed to chew ice when we were little. Or our whole lives, you know, he would just always get all over us for chewing ice. It's not the hardness, but it's the coldness right. that makes those microscopic cracks in your teeth, yeah. and then your teeth crumble. They will. So they went to put that cold thing on my healthy, beautiful teeth, and I'm like, uh, uh, uh. And it was so cute because they were like, "You have to do this." I said, "No, I don't. No, I I'm don't. 55 years old. I don't have. To. I don't have to <laughs> eat broccoli, and I don't have to put cold <laughs> on my teeth. I don't care how much I'm paying you." Right. So I refused it. Okay, so we're moving so, on. Well, I just want to show you the here. beauty of Doctor. Wall. This is a really um, sick person. He had diabetes, severely worn teeth, abscessed teeth, a root canal treated teeth. Obstructive sleep apnea, mercury uh, poisoning, decay yeah. of the teeth. Really bad teeth. And there's the before and the after. He had infected root canals removed and replaced with zirconium implants. I just thought that's really nice. Okay. And then the diabetes was monitored by his primary care physician mm -hmm. and controlled with insulin and improved nutrition. Yep. And that's what he looked like afterwards. Ha ha. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? My favorite slide in the whole podcast. <laughs> Here we go. Yep, that's me. There that he is. That handsome guy there on yep. the upper left. The there one on the right there, my record's been expunged. So don't worry about the picture <laughs> on the right. But there's my teeth. The you know, uppers and lowers there on the right side, except for gold crowns at 20, 29, and 30. And they look pretty Don't good. Don't those teeth look pretty good? They look pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean, hold on to your stomach. Wait, and those gold crowns, I have to put a little plug in for my dad. He put those in. Oh, my goodness, 20 years ago. Yeah, and um, dad was saying when he put them in, he was saying gold is the best thing. It's the best thing to put in your teeth. And it, I don't know. I haven't done a ton of research on it, but what did Dr. Wall say? Oh, uh -uh. it's just two inches from your brainstem. Yeah. Metal. <laughs> Conductive metal two inches away from your yeah. brainstem. I don't know that that's the best idea. <laughs> He's, that's, what, that's the way he said it. And I got such a headache after that when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> but look at, those, look at that arch up on the top. Look how nice the teeth look, how clean they look. Who would think that there was a problem? Oh my goodness! You can't even believe what was Take inside. Take the children of them. out of the room wait, before wait, you wait, see wait. this next slide. Um, but I wanted to say something about this that is so important. I want you to remember, he had no pain. Oh, I had no pain. He had no pain. Now he did a cone, a, a, a cone image, which is a CAT scan of my upper and lower jaw, so you can see inside the tooth from a 360 degree angle. There are things in your teeth you cannot see on a two dimensional x-ray. Yeah, they get Which hidden. is the common dental exam. Right. If you really want to see what's going on, you have to use the cone view. So he pulled us in after that and had a wonderful little interview with us and went through, just like an MRI, sliced your teeth, you know, and your sinuses. Yep. And so you could see from different angles these massive infections. Oh, gosh. I, w I went in there to have one root canal tooth. I thought, all right, let's try this out. I'll have one taken out and 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 because I have an implant. Mm -hmm. I'll just, I can get another implant. Let's see. When I saw, the, and listen, I read x-rays all day long in my clinic. Yeah. I know what I'm looking at. It and was so I, scary. When I saw what was going on in all six of these. That's the aliens. The aliens are coming oh, to wait, get what, us. What, uh, go where? <laughs> get, They're coming get, through the headphones. What can you bring <laughs> Bring Snickers. <laughs> That's a strange message from the mothership. They want okay, Snickers. So let's get back to your. Okay. So uh, when I saw my six root canal teeth and I saw what was going on at the roots of these teeth, that only, only one of them showed on an x ray. The rest of them did not show on an x ray. They, they looked right. It was a negative x ray. Mm -hmm. But on a cone view, it was so Holy scary. Holy smoke. And I sat there and I looked at Mary and I said, honey, they're all coming out. Yeah, it took you a little while because one was your front tooth. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why we had that picture that's in there. That's why we had that picture in yeah. there. One of them is one of my... It was a root canal you had had done since 1978 or 79? Yeah, it's, it's tooth number nine. Yeah. 
Number nine. So take the kids out of the room. Okay. We're going to show you some video here. This is scary. And this is disgusting. But <laughs> am I ever glad now that this happened? Yep. All right. Here we go. Okay. This is one of Jack's extracted. I think that might be the very front one. It could. No, 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 the no, one no, with the black not. rings. It's the coming up. Uh, uh, the, the, this is so gross, man. I got sick watching these. He gave us a whole bunch of these videos. The picture on the right is a healthy premolar tooth extracted for orth orthodontic reasons. In other words, they probably were so crowded, they had to pull out a tooth or two to make room for braces yeah. to give them a, a so decent... So there's a little blood. And, there's a little blood because the tooth was just... But look at the root. Beautiful, healthy tooth. The crown tooth. is on the right. The root is on the left. Now, look at that tooth in the picture. That was now one watch. of my teeth that was pulled out. Does gonna, that look like a healthy here, tooth? Here we go. It's a video. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Look at that. Look at those abscesses. Now, it's going to get close. It's so gross. I can't even look at it. I'm looking away. Abscess tissue all over it. And Disgusting necrosis. You think that would be causing the worst pain in the world? No, no feeling. No feeling. But see, it's a root canal. The root had been removed. The alarm system Was to warn gone. my immune system, to, a, to a warn me, and it had been closed off, so an anaerobic environment allowed this bacteria to grow. Here's the next oh, one. Oh, I went ahead. Sorry. That's this, okay. No, this is this the next is the one. black ring on see the root. That, see that black ring near the tip? Yeah. What did Dr. Wall say about that? He said he has never seen this before. Never this was your front tooth. It's been in for like 40 years, this root canal. This one in in the 70s, yeah. My look first root at that. canal. Does that look like a healthy tooth Look to at you? all that. Look at that abscess stuff, that pussy stuff. No, wait. It gets worse. Just a minute. Oh. <laughs> I hope you haven't lost your lunch yet. Oh, it's But we're doing so this bad. for a reason because I, this I used to kiss you. didn't hurt. Look at this. There was no pain because the alarm system had been turned off. See that black ring? And all, and he didn't even know what that was. He was like, I've never seen that before. It was the freakiest thing ever. Maybe that's why the mothership is calling me so Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, your teeth, that, right. that tooth's gone now. All right. I still have something Here's left the next in my one. stomach. One more. We're going to show you this one more here. This is decayed, abscessed, diseased, and rotted tooth. Oh, let oh, me start the video. Goodness. It's just 17 seconds long because that's all I can take. Yeah. Look down Does inside. Does that look like a healthy tooth to no, you? No, wait. Look at that huge abscess oh, oh, oh. thing on the side. This is so gross. That is now out of me. Yes. Aren't you thrilled? Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding? Wait. That is it, now does it out have of more? me. No, nope, that was it. <sighs> <sighs> well, I hope you kept the slides going, even if you had to put your hands over your eyes. <laughs> Those were so gross. Those disgusting Dirty things were in my mouth, in my part of my teeth. And you didn't even know. And I didn't even know it because I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel it because it had a root canal. So we have to stop it here. It's too long. It's too long. It's too long. And we have some fantastic stories to tell you about what happened to Jack. Yes. What Dr. Wall yes. did, which was was something I have never heard. And I've been in, you know, the dental family forever and ever. It, it, it was so exciting that I have, I am going to get my root you canal. You have one root canal. I have one. And in every week or so, you're Ever have since they out. put it in three years ago or yes. so or four, it has never not hurt. Now, it's a dead tooth. It shouldn't hurt. It shouldn't hurt. So maybe there's something going on underneath of well, it that's affecting the nerve in the jaw of itself. Of course, yes. And and um, when they did the root canal, I remember them saying you had so much pus in there. And as we know, you can't get it out. As we've explained, no, you can't get it tomb. all out. It's sealed It's like King Tut until somebody yeah, comes along so and opens the So I'm a little bunny rabbit that's going to die. <laughs> so next week, we're going to continue this with some incredible, some more video. <laughs> <laughs> with a cavitation and some other things oh, that happen to you. If you didn't lose your lunch on these, yeah, you wait till you see you the next You wait ones. till next week. That's it's pretty bad. But and we're gonna all, and it's me. Yeah. It's, it's me at my best. <laughs> I'm not putting mine on there. I don't know what mine look, will look like. Okay, so we're gonna end this now. It's almost an hour long. We're so sorry, but next week it will be worth it. Before we end though, we want to remind you one more time of this very rare coupon and this very rare thing I did where you can use the coupon over and over until March 2nd. 
So get it in, tell your family, tell your friends. That's a huge $85 savings on this bottle of enzymes. So um, I wanted to quickly go down the different things that the enzymes help real fast. It slows the aging process. It helps hypoglycemia. It's a fantastic pancreatic support. It helps heartburn, food breakdown, complete digestive support, sugar cravings. We're going to read a testimonial about this guy's sugar cravings were gone after taking this. Bloating, lack of energy, diabetes support, gut di- gut dysbiosis, achy joints, which is a huge one for people, and then a morning person problem when you can't get up in the morning. This, um, If I forget to take these, I notice it. Oh, yeah. I stopped taking them for about two weeks one time. And then I started back up, and I just popped out of bed in the morning. Yeah, you do. When you so, take them before you go to bed at night, mm-hmm. you jump out of it's bed wonderful. in the morning. wonderful. Insulin-dependent support, dementia, we've off-labeled seeing that help. Um, and we have people who are telling us the, all, they're, all, they're uh, Alzheimer's, or yeah. at least their dementia symptoms yeah. are improving. We don't represent this as being anything <laughs> medical for Alzheimer's whatsoever. No, it's just support. It's just that they come in and they tell us these they things. They tell us these things and much more. So don't forget to use the very rare coupon and you can only use it on our website, yeah. not Amazon. Okay, the disclaimer, the statements made in this webinar about specific products have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided or any information contained on or in any pot product label or packaging or this webinar is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other health care professionals. Remember, we are not dentists. We are not giving you we, dental ab- no, advice. No, we're not. My experience with dentistry is what I told you in a classroom, and that is it. Everything I've learned about what you have heard so far is from published research articles and the book, The Toxic Tooth. Neither one of us are dentists. This is for informational purposes only. It's up to you to do some research on your own and decide what you want to do. And not last but not least, please leave a comment or questions at the end of this podcast. We would really like some more of those. And on our blogs also, I notice our incredible blogs, some, some of these are just answers to questions that we have given personally, and they've, we've put them into blogs, and they're really, really good. And we would love to have some comments yes. that we could pass on and use to help create a rip a hole in the universe there we go with forbidden doctors remember you can always call text or email us with questions we will help you please do any of those things text call or email us or come in to see us and we will help as many people as we have to to keep up with the demands okay we can start a health revolution yes we can and get this done and next week part two part two it's even better than this this was bad wait till you see next week yeah okay we'll see you next week Thank you for listening to the Forbidden Doctor Podcast. If you are curious about long life energy enzymes or ageless thyroid, you can purchase them without a membership from our website at ForbiddenDoctor.com or get our enzyme formula from Amazon.com by searching the full term long life energy enzymes. Don't forget to take our obligation free symptom survey to get a free personalized supplement protocol recommended for you by Dr. Jack. Mary, or one of our qualified nutritionists. Take the survey, get a call from our nutritionist to create a protocol and a patient login, then use that login to see your own personal protocol along with any favorites you've saved from our symptom library. Remember, our website and our clinic are here for you always.